Hey there, everybody, and thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of The Conference Talk Show. My name is Tom Singer. And I'm Elise Green. And hey, Tom, you met somebody yes. really cool at an in-person event recently. Yes, actually, in-person event. It was outdoor, and I encountered not only our guests today, but a whole bunch of people who work for his company, and it might be one of the most impressive organizations I have met over the last year and a half in helping clients deal with events and pivoting and repositioning and going virtual. I am so excited for this conversation. I got to talk to him a, a little bit uh, extra than we normally do before we go because evidently it's storming in Austin, Texas, right? Uh, so we're a little delayed today. So I get to spend some time. Tell us who our guest is because boy, I'm excited for this conversation. Yeah, you know, we're starting a little late because I had no power in my house for 10 minutes, but but it came back and, and we're here and we're really excited because on today's conference talk show, our guest is Norm Leader, and he is a producer and problem solver at ATX Event Systems. And what they do is they're a production company that helps brands and other people put on live events of all types, and they offer AC level support. But they're somewhere between an AV company and an agency, which makes them a lot easier to work with and a lot more full service. So, Norm, welcome to the Conference Talk Show. Yay! Hey, great to be here, guys. Thanks so much for having me on. No, this it was so very great exciting. to meet you. Yeah, no, we're excited to have you. It was so great to meet you. And, you know, in addition to doing amazing things in the events industry, you also were a great host. You gave me a tour of your facility, of your studio. And I thought, you know what, this is the type of company that we want to talk to here on the conference mm -hmm. talk show. So, so thanks for being here. Could you give us a little bit more information about ATX Event Systems? Yeah, Tom, um, we've been doing events. I've done uh, two, 3,000 events over the last mm -hmm. uh, 10, 12 years, usually a couple hundred um, each year. And um, like I told you, whenever you came out to visit us at our campus, um, we entered into this new world like everybody else. Um, uh, well, we had to do it fast. <laughs> we had about, uh, in about 48, 48 hours after South by Southwest shut down, it, it became the canary in the coal mine that just sort of cascaded, mm -hmm. rippled across all events everywhere across mm -hmm. the world, you know, and instead of just sort of resting on our laurels, you know, putting our head in the sand, we didn't know what else to do except for go live. We just immediately started live streaming every Friday, 48 hours after the shutdown, you know, uh, scores of events planned that were shuttered. We just immediately took advantage of the uh, abundance of talent in town, the musicians, mm -hmm. um, all of the, the thought leadership that was there. We sat down for interviews live, all live. Uh, we had bands in to perform live, provided them with some content back that they could hopefully use to do some initial marketing and start to rebuild uh, what was, you know, a, mm -hmm. a pretty devastating, uh, you know, uh, cancellation of a lot of their gigs. So, um, you know, what I showed you out here, our, our facility is, we, we actually bought it in January before the shutdown. We took ownership oh. of it in uh, that summer. So we basically completely remodeled and repurposed uh, all of our plans. Um, mm. that was, and it was purpose built to support virtual events and how to do them better. We basically, like you guys, uh, we became broadcasters overnight, right. you know, and luckily we, luckily we have, you know, decades of experience among us uh, in doing broadcasts. So it was kind of second nature, but um, uh, I don't know, at the end of the day, it was uh, a lot of stress, uh, a lot of work, but mm -hmm. it turned out to be a lot of fun. I think that, I love that story about uh, you know, in 24 or 48 hours, just making the decision that it was time. We just have to move forward. And I think a lot of organizations had to make the decision just to move forward. And many should be congratulated in pulling it off in, you know, their 2020 or 20 early 2021 events, fully virtual, you know, good job. But now as we look 
as we're planning into fall of 2021 and around of 2022, it seems like what we were able to pull off in 2020 is not quite going to cut it when we're expecting people to pay us. Uh, in in our conversation before we started, you said that we really need to focus, dig deep on the user experience. Tell me how you're working with clients to do that. Well, I think it, you know a lot of times when there's you know myriad challenges and problems and fires everywhere, mm-hmm. where it, it's too many stop gaps, too many band aids, and like you said, uh, what we did last year for a lot of folks uh, won't won't cut it, won't carry it mm-hmm. into the, the future. And if we just stop and we realize why we're doing this in the first place, and we really, really obsess over the attendee, over the end user, and we make that genuinely central to what we're doing and planning, it, it tends to move a lot of the, the noise out of the conversation and, and let you focus on what's really, really important. And that's the people in the room or you know at home in the room. Right, in the virtual room. <laughs> Uh, and speaking of the virtual room, I spent a little time poking around the website uh, for ATX Systems uh, Event Systems yesterday, and I am floored and extremely intrigued by, is it called extended reality, what you're doing? It's certainly one of the many, many... Uh cool things all the, the young hip kids are doing out there, video game design. Um, absolutely. Um, extended reality is, uh, a lot of people might be familiar with how they uh, shot Mandalorian, for example, it's the example mm-hmm. that they're Star Wars fans. Um, using camera motion tracking and um, really high-end uh, video servers and uh, wildly talented game designers, um, you can immerse someone uh, into a space that's created digitally, and you could do the same thing uh, for some budget, you know, for smaller budgets, even on a green screen. So you don't have mm. to have a full Star Wars soundstage. You don't have to have twelve thousand square foot like we have uh, out back on our lot um, to get really, really uh, impactful uh, visuals. Because mm. you know, Zoom, like you said, probably not going to cut it next year for your you know two three thousand person conference. It worked for some, but you know I think the time for for band aids uh, is is gone. You know, let's yeah. treat the problem holistically. You know, and uh, and I think that's how how we come out of it. You know, but yeah, come. So, I'll, I'll be happy to uh, hook you guys up with an extended reality uh, set. You guys want to do a, a summer special huh. uh, sometime? Let me know. <laughs> Heck yeah, that awesome. that'd be wildly fun. <laughs> so. As you're looking to the clients that you're working with for this fall and into next year, what are some of the trends that you guys are seeing? Because you work with a lot of people and you're serving people who do high-end level productions. What are some of the trends yeah. for meetings that are happening? Oh, the trends, 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 trends. Well, um, we, we've done over 150 virtual events since this began. Um, what, one trend uh, that jumps out at me is um, the hybrid wasn't Im- didn't immediately just become the reigning champ, you know. Uh, after a lot of virtual, you know, a lot mm-hmm. of us assumed that would be the case. It's slower to get going. Um, the trend um, that I think is most interesting is that clients um, we're seeing some they're they're bringing their their production partners, their agency, uh, or even audiovisual provider. Uh, into the conversation earlier, mm-hmm. and they're using that um, you know institutional knowledge that, that we have from doing so many events to assist with everything from their uh, conceptualizing their their show, the story of it, the, the framework, the, the run of show, the pacing of it, um, but but also their contracts. You guys mm. with some of these facilities. Uh, the force majeure clauses, the the minimums, some of the exclusivities, um, and actually getting into the into the room as a partner with them, so that um, they really really get the, the fairest uh, shape. And I, I think that's maybe that's a testament to our clients' wisdom, or maybe just how uh, thoroughly we kind of look at it from our end. But it's 
I think it's imperative to really reevaluate everything. You know, it's it's a good good practice, I think, to uh, read the contract, right? <laughs> yes, and I, I like that idea of. I'm sure you have far more experience being in places, understanding how all of those contracts, uh, you know, we were talking about, uh, Tom and I were at the National Speakers Association uh, annual event, which was in Las Vegas in a union house. That was a very complicated experience in terms of what we were able to do, what we were allowed to do, and having a partner that actually has worked in that in terms of your uh, AV professionals, your production professionals, is huge. Oh, you're you're uh, you're not wrong. I mean, you go to Vegas. <laughs> uh, you, you don't want to gamble on everything, you know. And so I think having um, you know just looking at the internet costs, some of the egregious mm-hmm. uh, costings that are there, you know, and just frankly, if, if a lot of people knew that. The, you know, the person producing their show didn't have to be the in-house, if, an, a vendor. If that could be a partner and, and you're mutually aligned on your goal, you know, that's something that you can build a relationship from. You can work yep. event over event, year over year, instead of just, you know, working with someone new each time. And frankly, there's a ton of efficiency you get out of, like, working with the same people day in, day out. Imagine, Absolutely. Imagine, imagine if you had to swap Tom out every week. You know, every month with someone new. You know, no. you, mean, you know, that one, would not one, work. Time out of ten, one time out of ten, Norm might you know uh, be able to carry the day for him. But I mean, ninety percent of the time, you're going to want to stick with your, your partner that you know and trust. I think. Absolutely, absolutely. No, and that 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 is so true because you really do. And Liz and I have proven this over the last year and a half, and even longer. She and I started working with hybrid events eight years ago as the online hosts for the remote audience, trying to get people engaged who were watching from afar. And then we jumped in with with this broadcast. It was twice a week, now it's once a week for a year and a half. And you really do learn how to work with somebody. You learn how to take those verbal cues. When when we were doing things together in a studio pre-pandemic, we could read each other's body language. But we had to relearn how to work together doing you know this show from Milwaukee and Austin every single week. Yep. It's oh, yeah. We all did a lot of learning uh, over the last year. I think. Well, yes. hopefully, we all learned. We all learned something. You know. So, Norm, I'm about? currently in. I'm currently in negotiations with a large brand about being the MC for their hybrid event, and what they're very focused on is, and, and they said something that Liz, Liz and I have said a million times on this show, and that is. We learned over the last year and a half that great data can be transmitted in a virtual conference. However, that serendipity of that human experience of people being together in a room is harder to replicate. You can do some good stuff, but they're really focused on making the in-person event an experience. And instead of being worried about having the smartest content, they want everything to flow as part of sort of a big story arc over the three days and they're looking to have an MC tie it together, but they're reinventing how they do their users conference. Is this something that you're seeing with other clients? Absolutely. And I think they're, you know, the, what's really key, I think, for uh, some of the successes that we've had um, and, and moving forward is that, one, let's just be honest, you cannot replace human interaction and the networking uh, that happens in person. You can't replace a, a, a warm handshake, uh, you know, a sharing a cold beverage, you know, <laughs> with, with someone. Um, but, you know, the the data and the metrics you can get um, about your uh, attendees and the viewership and, and their habits from a virtual uh, standpoint um, is, is also irreplaceable. And frankly, to mm-hmm. some of the bean counters, um, uh, it gives you a leg to stand on when you're upping your budgets and you're increasing production value. If you have those key, you know, those KPIs you can point to and the, the ROIs that you can, you know, uh, put up out front, great. But sometimes it just means, you know, uh, divorcing the audience a little bit. You know, they don't mm-hmm. always have to have the exact same experience because they, they're not going to have, they're having the same experience. So, um, you know, we, it is going to be challenging for people if they want to do it right. 
you know, and, and one of the trends that I would say is that the uh, people's attention spans, the shorter keynotes, the shorter segments, mm -hmm. the longer breaks that happen over the shutdown, those will carry over into your physical event. They should. You know, yeah. people are still going to have, they're going to want shorter programming, more time to mingle. In fact, it, like this fall, this year, allow them a ton of time to network. You know, the ones we've seen come back from the time they hit the airport until the time they, they, they leave the airport, they're networking. They're networking on the plane. Mm -hmm. They're networking, you know, uh, in line at the airport. They're passing out business cards to anyone who will listen. And so just remember that that is, you know, a, a huge motivator for anyone experiencing a live event right now. So giving that time uh, and making it important, um, I think, should, should be front of mind for everybody. So what is a super win that mm -hmm. ATX event systems had this year? You don't have to give us the client name or you can, but what's something that you did where when it was over, you were like, oh man, we knocked it out of the park. Well, um, there's a very large uh, successful tech company here in, uh, in Texas and Austin that we helped transition uh, what, what used to be a flagship, like week-long event, into an entirely new format, following uh, a really big rebrand this year. Um, we, we did it all live across um, North America, Europe, um, Asia, getting uh, captioning, subtitling, uh, translation mm -hmm. done live across the globe for you know Korea, Japan, uh, China, and and doing it all smartly, safely, and like effectively is a huge feather in our cap but i think that's that was our goal when we set out is instead of hiding our head in the sand we were going to go uh up market we were going to help the people that were out there that needed the help and provide a way forward um uh, by doing it ourselves that's how we started we just started doing it to demonstrate how it could be done mm -hmm. as opposed to you know here's a you know a powerpoint presentation on the three steps of going virtual or pivoting, <laughs> you know, the, the key thing about the pivot is that you need to do it, you know, when you need to do it. You, need, you can't just, yeah. it, you know, it's like you can't just uh, talk about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hmm, Tom. <clears throat> hmm. Is it about that time? It is. I think it's about that time. You want to make the announcement this time? I will, and Norm may not even know what this is. So something that Eliz and I created with the conference talk show just a few months ago was a new thing called the Conference Hero Award, where we keep our eyes open and we look for individuals and companies who are going above and beyond the call of duty in the event industry. And it was about three weeks ago that I was first exposed to ATX event systems and every encounter I've had, including coming to your, your client's live little mixer out by the pool on your property, everything that I've encountered has been exactly what we hope from all of our event meeting professionals over the last year and a half. That ability to move fast, the ability to you know understand, hey, we're going to a new world. This isn't just live streaming you know, your, your event, but actually turning it into a broadcast. It's what you did with building that custom studio that you've been able to use for your clients. It is uh, the way you served your clients and doubling down on that user experience, which is what events are all about. Right. That is why we want to award ATX Event System the Conference Hero Award from the Conference Talk Show. So thank you for all that you and your team does. Tom, you guys, that's that's amazing. I mean, coming from you all, that means... Uh... God, that means a ton. It's. I wish I could take all the credit myself and and literally take this uh, and put it on my desk. But um, it, it goes it goes out to our project managers, the rest of our team. I mean, we all just did nothing but solve problems and get uh, leaner and meaner. Um, and and frankly, we got to recruit and grow. We hired, you know, um, more people during this thing instead of letting people go and and some of those were really really key individuals uh well, thank you i mean it, doing all this has helped us give back help the mm -hmm. local arts community help fundraisers great causes you know musicians that didn't have a place to you know, properly you know put on a show um and so i i appreciate it and i would love to you know take this 
and, and pay it forward. I mean, I'm probably going to give out some awards internally uh, tomorrow during <laughs> our, our weekly staff meeting. Well, we'll but, have to uh, talk about how many mugs you need because you're going to get some mugs with the conference here <laughs> on it. We, we need some because you know what? Oh. This, this, this disposable mugs, you know, it's no good. We got to get that. It's no, no good. Not good for the environment. No, it's, it's that's conference right. heroes <laughs> drink out of ceramic mugs. That's what well, that's what we that's, believe. Yeah, I've seen that so as a thing have, with conference heroes. I have one uh, question for you then. What does the future hold for ATX event systems? Well, we want to continue to, to strengthen the relationships we already have and remember how we got here, the big successes with our clients and, and really never forget that. But um, I think it's going to be, you're going to see more of the same from us. You know, we, we never say, we never say no. Um, there's always a way. And whether it's, if it means we have to add people, if we have to add cities, markets, um, technologies, uh, we'll do it, you know, and I think just in the future from us, you, you might see um, more of proactive events coming from us in the entertainment uh, world, uh, a little bit more storytelling, um, some big uh, partners you might see uh, coming up uh, where we're collaborating um, on some um, really fun, important work, uh, potentially with concerts and musicians you know uh just a little tease you know definitely uh cat's not out of the bag on that one yet we, we do have some pretty exciting things coming that's fantastic absolutely fantastic well thank you norm for all that you and atx event systems has done over the past 15 months and beyond if somebody is sitting watching this and going I need to work with them. How would they find you? You can find us at atxes.com. Um, and that's ATX Event Systems. Um, we're on all the, the socials and what have you. But, you know, it, uh, you could always just give us a, a phone call. Just give uh -huh. us a You can actually, don't forget, you guys, sometimes you can actually just pick up a phone and talk to a person. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, awesome. we're a technology company, but um, we are about um, people. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, Norm, thank you so much for joining us here on the Conference Talk Show. Thanks, guys. So, it was so much fun. One of the greatest things about this Conference Hero Award is that it's caused me, and I'm sure you're doing the same thing, to really keep my eyes open yeah. as I'm seeing people who are serving the events world and helping people sort of claw their way out of the whole of the last 15 months. and. You know, when you're aware of things, eyes are open. You start to see things. Like as soon as I encountered this company, I'm like, these people are conference heroes. So uh, if you're watching and your company or an individual who you know has gone beyond the call of duty, please uh, let us know about it because we're looking for nominations. You can go to conferenceheroaward.com. We're looking for people to nominate because it can't just be all our friends or people who invite me to have a beer by their pool. Although that's yes. good too. It is good. I mean, nobody's opposed to a beer by the pool, but uh, it shouldn't just be our friends. And it's a great way for us to connect with smart people doing amazing things. You can find that at conferencehereoaward.com. You can find information about Tom and I at conferencetalkshow.com. You can find us uh, on Facebook at conferencetalkshow.live, on YouTube at conferencetalkshow.watch. We will be back on Monday. I think, boy, we booked this a while ago, but I think this is going to be really important, Tom. We're going to be talking about pandemic compliance and what is new on that. I think this was timed very well. So join us on Monday at 11 a.m. Central Time. We'll see you soon. And thank you, Norm, for being with us again. That was a great episode. See you next Monday.